Well, good morning and welcome to the spring commencement worship service at the Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Texas Baptist College. As we begin this time of worship and celebration, we first hear from the one who ultimately invited us to worship and made the way possible through his son, Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So as we begin, hear these words from David's prayer of dedication in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the splendor and the majesty. For everything in the heavens and on earth belong to you. Now, therefore, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. So may I invite you to stand and let's sing the processional hymns, praise to the Lord the Almighty and to God be the glory.
you for your singing. Will you remain standing for the invocation? Dr. Robert Caldwell, who serves as professor of church history here at Southwestern Seminary, will lead us in our prayer. Will you join us as we pray? Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. For many of us here today, this is the end of our time, our season here at Southwestern. Lord, we're grateful for bringing us through our courses and our degrees, for building us up in the scriptures, make us strong and continue to make us strong in the scriptures. We're grateful for you bringing into our lives friends, mentors, and in some cases, spouses and children in our time here. Lord, thank you for these precious relationships. Lord, and we're grateful for this time to celebrate with family and friends the closing of this chapter in our lives. Thank you for bringing us to this day today. Lord Jesus, you are also the, the Lord of new beginnings. You filled us with your spirit, and now you are sending us out. Lord, we look forward in hope to the ministries that you have for us, that the gospel may go forth through our lives, that the word might shine in the darkness. May it bear fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. Lord, we look forward in hope for your spirit to strengthen us in grace through times of crises and difficulties, through times of great accomplishment and revival. Lord, through times of temptation and dying to self, be with us, Lord, and strengthen us. And we look forward, finally, in hope that Jesus Christ might be known and praised in the nations through our labors as we leave this place. Lord, we lift up these things in your name, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. What a joy it is to welcome you to Commencement 2023 on the campus of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. It is a delight to see all of you who are here to support these uh, graduates on this very special significant and memorable day. Uh, we look, have looked forward to this day since their arrival on this campus, and now we have the opportunity uh, to celebrate their achievements, to give thanks to God for his goodness in their lives, and for all of those who've invested in them on this particular day. We thank Dr. Caldwell for leading us in our invocation, and Dr. Kreider for leading us in our processional hymns, and I'll introduce others who will be participating in our program in just a few minutes. But I want to say to those who are here to uh, support these graduates, we are so delighted that you are here. Some of you have come long distances to be with us on this day, and we pray God's uh, blessings upon you and trust that this will be a very special day. There are few days in the life of our calendar a year here on this campus where we get to see the beautiful variety of the Southwestern Seminary student body like we're able to see it on a day like this, a time of graduation. Multilingual, multi-ethnic, intercultural, international, indeed the Southwestern education reaches around the globe and it is reflected as these graduates walk across the stage on this day. And for that, we celebrate God's kindness and goodness to this institution. We are certainly happy to have uh, board members who are here to support this occasion, faculty and staff, of course. But we are particularly glad to have family members of these graduates, spouses, parents, grandparents, children, grandchildren, siblings. If you're here today and you're a family member who've invested in these graduates and you're here to celebrate them, would you stand that we might celebrate you and give thanks to you for your presence with us today? We 
We know that there are also many special friends and pastors, ministers, church leaders who are here. Thank you for your presence as well. Uh, these graduates recognize that it has uh, taken many to help them cross the finish line on this day. You've prayed for them, you've supported them, you've encouraged them for every way that you've made a difference in their lives. I know they join me in offering thanks to each one of you. On this day, I particularly want to thank the staff of the Southwestern community. A day like this cannot happen without dozens of people uh, planning, working, coordinating. Their presence here today uh, says much, but they've been working on this for many days prior to today. Uh, particularly uh, is that true of Karen Gilstrap, our registrar who has coordinated all of these events, but we're grateful to her, all the members of the academic services and academic administration team, to Joey Cruz and the facilities team who have the campus looking so uh, wonderful today, our security team, alumni and communications, the uh, admissions and advancement team, the technology and events team seated right there in the middle. We're so thankful for each one of them and staff from across the campus. We're able to enjoy this day because of their hard work. Would you join me, please, in thanking the staff of Southwestern University. As we have mentioned, Dr. Caldwell led us in our invocation. Dr. Carl Bradford will lead us in our benediction. He also will serve as our coordinator and sergeant at arms for uh, this uh, particular day. Dr. Joe Kreider will be leading our uh, music as we sing together uh, this morning in time of worship. Jerry Westenkyler will be our uh, serving us on the organ. Dr. Alan Lott leading us on the piano. And Ben Caston celebrating his birthday today will bring a special musical offering uh, for us. Dr. Matt Queen, our academic leader, will guide us in the important aspects of today's uh, service and Dr. Danny, Chairman Danny Roberts is here with us uh, representing the Board of Trustees showing the investment of the board in all aspects of our work from start to finish and we're delighted that he will be here to offer a prayer for the graduates. The commencement address today is will be brought by our Chancellor Dr. O.S. Hawkins. Dr. O.S. Hawkins is a stellar leader a leader of leaders, a pastor of pastors, a Baptist statesman who uh, stands tall in Southern Baptist life and in the evangelical world at large. He is from Fort Worth, Texas, and so it is very special that he now circles back to invest here in this place, which he holds two degrees. He also holds an undergraduate degree from our institution across town at uh, TCU. He is the author of numerous works, devotional works, uh, works on uh, scripture, sermon books, pastor handbooks, and now he has moved into the area of writing uh, history related to uh, Baptist life with a recent book in the name of God and a forthcoming biography on the legendary W.A. Criswell. Uh, Dr. Hawkins served as pastor of First Baptist Church, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas, provided exemplary leadership for Guidestone Financial Resources for a quarter of a century, and now we are delighted that he is serving as chancellor at Southwestern Seminary, and we look forward to hearing from him today. He is married to Susie. We wish she could be with us today, but she is not feeling well. I know you will join us in praying for her. But we're thankful for, not only for Dr. Hawkins, but for all of those who will be leading us in our uh, commencement service this day. This time, I would like to invite Dr. Matt Queen to come and make a special presentation. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> in 2022, following a gift to the seminary to recognize the outstanding work of this faculty, uh, the David S. and Lenise Dockery Award for Teaching Excellence was established in their honor 
uh, for their uh, years of service to Christian higher education and to theological education. So each year at spring commencement, we recognize a member of Southwestern Seminary's faculty to receive this special recognition. Our faculty nominates their colleagues whom they dis, uh, determine meet the highest standards of teaching performance and faculty responsibilities. And so this morning we announced the second recipient of this most esteemed award. I would like to ask that the president come uh, here to my right uh, to greet uh, this recipient as he comes uh, to the stage. So in grateful recognition for the faithful and effective teaching of students and genuine demonstration of personal care and concern for the development of students, both inside and outside the classroom. <laughs> I would like to invite the Vernon D. and Jeanette Davidson Chair of Missions and Associate Professor of Islamic Studies, Dr. Dean Sieberhagen, to the stage to be recognized. Just a personal word about Dr. Sieberhagen as he makes his way to his seat. Dr. Sieberhagen has served on this faculty for over a decade, coming to us from the field after 12 years of service with the International Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. And what he did and what God did through him and his wife Sandra, who is also with us here today on the field, they are now investing in students who are now going to the mission field. And so Dr. Sieberhagen, today, sir, we honor you. I'd now like to invite Dr. Hong Yi Yang, Assistant Professor of World Christianity, to come and read our scripture today. Dr. Yang. I will be reading this passage in English first and then in Mandarin. If you are able, would you please stand for the reading of God's word? Psalm 34, 1 through 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will boast in the Lord. The humble will hear and be glad. Proclaim the Lord's greatness with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and rescued me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant with joy. Their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him from all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encaps around those who fear him and rescues them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. How happy is the person who takes refuge in him. 诗篇第三十四篇一到八节我要时时称颂耶和华赞美他的话必藏在我口中我的心必因耶和华夸耀谦卑人听见就要喜乐你们和我当称耶和华为大一同高举他的名我曾寻求耶和华他就应允我救我脱离了一切的恐惧凡仰望他的便有光荣他的脸他们的脸必不蒙羞我这困苦人呼求耶和华便垂听救我脱离一切患难耶和华的使者在敬畏他的人四围安营
搭救他们。你们要尝尝主恩的滋味，便知道他是美善。投靠他的人有福了。May the Lord bless the reading of His word. You may be seated. Messages from Thee, filled with messages from Thee. Take my will and make it Thine. It shall be no longer mine. And I will be ever only all for Thee, ever only all for Thee. Ever. Done and congratulations, graduates! Forty-nine years ago this week, I got my first degree from here, in MDiv. And so, as you celebrate today, and you celebrate with all your family and friends who are filling this building today, there's another group of folks that are celebrating with you, and that's this incredible faculty, these men and women who've poured their lives into you. They celebrate. You're the fruit of their labor. And I'll tell you this: you'll take them with you the rest of your life. Most of the professors I had here in the MDiv program are in heaven today, but they've lived on in my heart every day of the ministry that I've received from the Lord. You know, the best of all the commencement speeches are short. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <clears throat> 
Many of you may have heard after World War II, Yale was giving Sir Winston Churchill an honorary degree after the war. And he came to New Haven to receive it and to be the commencement speaker at their graduation. And they were also honoring a, an elderly man, a, a Yale alumnus who was a huge donor to the school who spoke right before Churchill. And he got up and he spoke and he thanked them and he talked about what it meant. And then he went into uh, an initialism, an acronym. He said, why? He said, why is for youth? And he talked about the importance of youth and how youth energized. He went on for 10 minutes talking about that. Then he said, A, A is for academics. And he talked about how that was what Yale was known for and how they were such academic, uh, such an academic institution and what these young people had gotten from there. It went on for another 10 or 12 minutes. L, he said, is for loyalty. And he talked about how they needed to go from that place and be loyal to their alma mater as donors and supporters of the school. And went on another 10 minutes. Then he got to E and he said, excellence. <clears throat> And he talked about excellence. After 45 minutes, he sat down. Whereupon Churchill came to the platform. And the first words he said was, he said, I suppose we should all pause and pray and thank God that the previous speaker was not a graduate of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. <laughs> so we, we want to be short and to the point. In just a moment, you're going to walk across this stage and receive a diploma that's well-earned through a lot of hard work and prayer and sacrifice. It's a defining moment in your life. It's a milestone in your life. And there's a sense in which the children of Israel did the same thing. After their education and their schooling in the wilderness, they too came to a place where they were to cross the Jordan, into their own promised land to which God had promised them. And as they were about to go, Moses left them some final words. Among them are those recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. When he asked this question, he said, you know, I, I, you're about to go into the land of promise. All these years we've been planning and preparing to go in. And then he asked this question. Now that you're about to go, what does the Lord require of you? Now, you graduates, you know a lot about what these professors have required of you. Master's thesis, dissertations, oral comps, defending dissertations, tests of all kinds, research papers. There's been a lot that has been required of you to come to this place to receive this diploma today. Now as you go, the question for you is not what do these professors require of you anymore. The question is the same that was asked of the children of Israel when they were about to launch out into their calling. Deuteronomy 10, 12, what does the Lord require of you but to fear the Lord your God? To fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. What does the Lord require of you but to fear the Lord your God? If there was a common thread that's woven through the, the lives of every man and woman in the Bible that was used of God, that had the power of God, the anointing of God, or whatever terminology you want to use, it was the fact that in one way or another it was said of all of them that they were walking in the fear of God. They realized that that's what the Lord required of them. All those Old Testament people, Noah, the Bible says in Hebrews 11, Noah, by fear, built the ark. The Hebrew midwives in Exodus 1, it says they feared God more than they did Pharaoh. Moses, 
here in his last words to the people of Israel, fear the Lord. Joshua took them in dry shod, and, and he went through and conquered the promised land. At the end of his life, in chapter 24, verse 14, he gives them a parting word. And what does he say? Now then, fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Isaiah, in chapter 50, verse 10, ask a question. Is there any among you any more who fears the Lord? A week from Sunday is Mother's Day. Pastors all over the country are going to pray that Proverbs 31 woman out. Oh, she's perfect. <clears throat> Most of the moms are so guilty by the time they get to lunch with their family, they don't know what to do. But if you want to know the secret of her life, read far enough down in chapter 31 till you come to verse 30, and it says, A woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Turn your Bible into the New Testament. It's all through the Gospels. In Luke 1, we're introduced to a young teenage virgin girl with the Christ alive and growing in her womb. Think about that. And she sings a song we call the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And she goes on in that song in verse 50 to sing, His mercy is on those who fear him. Same chapter, Zacharias lost his speech. He got it back and the Bible says, fear fell upon all of them. In Luke 5, Jesus heals a paralytic and verse 26 says, they were all amazed and filled with fear. In Luke 7, he passes through a village called Nain and, and heals a little dead boy. Rise, he raises him from the dead. And the Bible says in verse 16, fear fell upon all of them in the village of Nain and the name of Jesus Christ was multiplied. We turn our Bibles into the book of Acts, the dynamic story, the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the early church. It's on every page. In Acts 2, Peter preaches the great Pentecostal sermon. And what does verse 43 say? Fear fell upon all of them. And many signs and wonders were done by the apostles. In Acts 5, there's a couple causing dissension in the church, lying to the church, worse lying to the Holy Ghost, and God struck them dead. And verse 11 says, great fear came upon all the church. Last week, I stood in Caesarea on the Mediterranean coast in Israel. It was there that, that Peter took the gospel to the first Gentile convert, Cornelius. And what did he say in Acts 10 when he got to him? He said, whoever fears God and works righteousness will be accepted by him. We turn our Bibles into the epistles. It's all through the epistles. In Romans 3, verse 18, Paul laments of people who have no fear of God before their eyes anymore. In, in Romans eleven twenty, 20, he says, stand by faith. Don't be haughty, but fear the Lord. To the Corinthians, he says, let's perfect holiness in our lives. They ask how. And in 2 Corinthians 7, 1, he says, by walking in the fear of the Lord. To the Ephesians, he says, submit yourselves one to another. How? In the fear of the Lord. It's laced all through the scriptures. What does the Lord require of you? And finally, we get to the last book of the Bible, the Apocalypse, the Revelation. And in chapter 19, that beautiful picture of all the redeemed of all the ages, praising God, every tongue, nation, tribe, people. And then verse 5 says, a loud voice comes from the throne. And that voice says, praise our God, all you servants who fear him, both great and small. What does the Lord require of you? What does it mean to fear the Lord? Does it mean you have to walk around on eggshells afraid that if you do something wrong or say something wrong, he has some big club of retribution and he's gonna, something bad's going to happen to you or your family? No. The most common Old Testament word means to stand in awe before him with reverence and respect. The New Testament word is so akin to it. This reverential awe that you have before the Lord Jesus Christ who took your sin, who was died on the cross for your sin, was buried, who rose again on the third day, the gospel. It's to stand before him with this reverential awe, so much so that it becomes the controlling motivation of your life. It's not the fear that he's going to do something bad to you. I had a pastor at W. Fred Swank. He pastored 43 years, Sagamore Hill Baptist Church. In the decade of the 60s, 100 of us who were young people in that church went into gospel ministry. Almost all of them came here to Southwestern. Fred Swank taught me as a young man, just saved, what it meant to walk in the fear of God. 
He taught me that the fear of God was not the fear that God was going to put his hand of retribution on me, but it was the fear that God might take his hand of blessing or anointing off of me. That's what we're talking about. What does the Lord require of you? To live your life in such a fashion and in such an environment of the fear of the Lord that you don't want God to remove his hand of blessing, his hand of anointing from your life. What will happen as you go out into ministry now? What will happen if you begin to live in that environment that you don't want God to remove his hand? It'll make a difference in where you go, what you watch, what you say about people, what you do. You're going to go out in ministry, and you're going to be faced with all kinds of temptations. When you walk in the fear of the Lord, God will give you a supernatural ability to overcome your sinful desires. We're living in a world today where more and more people are falling in ministry. Start walking in the fear of God. It's what he requires of you, and he'll give you a supernatural ability to overcome your sinful desires. Where do we get that? Proverbs 16:6. It says, by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. Did you hear that? What about Moses at Sinai, Exodus 20, 20? God has come to test you, to see what is in your heart, that his fear might be upon you so that you might not sin. He'll give you supernatural ability to escape and make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. You know, when you go out in ministry, you're going to need wisdom. There's a difference in knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is the accumulation of facts. Almost anybody can acquire knowledge if they stay in the library long enough. Wisdom is the ability to take those facts that you've put into your life now and go out in ministry and make wise decisions in what to do and when to do it and how to do it. How many times in Proverbs do we read that the fear of the Lord is what? The beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning. There is no wisdom unless you're, not, unless you're walking in the fear of God. It's the beginning of wisdom. Many of you are going to go out to preach the gospel. How you need God's spirit to illumine the word to you. Listen to what Psalm 25, 14 said. The psalmist said, the secrets of the Lord are with those who fear him. And to them, He'll reveal his covenants. You start walking in the fear of God that you don't want God to take his hand of blessing and anointing. You'll be shocked and amazed at what it will do to your study. And some of you are going to need deliverance when you go out there. Some of you are going to go into churches that are demon-possessed. Some of you are going to go into churches that are deacon-possessed. <laughs> and you're going, to be, you're going to need deliverance. And in our scripture reading just a moment ago, we read from Psalm 34, verse 4. The angel of the Lord encamps among those who fear him and delivers them. What does the Lord require of you but to fear him as you go? Proverbs 2, my son, if you receive my words, you've done that here at this school, and treasure up my commandments within you, making your ear attentive to wisdom and inclining your heart to understanding, and if you call out for insight and raise your voice for understanding, if you seek it like silver, search for it like hidden treasure, then you'll understand the fear of the Lord. It's a learned behavior that you get from the word of the living God. Let me just close by saying Solomon is purported to be the wisest man who ever lived. He wrote the book of Ecclesiastes to tell us about the folly of all those things we think are so important in life, laughter and luxury and lust and all those things. It comes to the end of the book in chapter 12, verse 13. And he says, now then, hear the conclusion of the whole matter. That ought to make us perk our ears up. Now then, he said, hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. That's it. That's the conclusion. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. You say, preacher, I want the hand of God on me. Friend, it was the hand of God that brought you to Southwestern. 
It's the hand of God that's seen you through these years of toil and struggle and study. And it's the hand of God that will go with you when you leave this platform to your place of service, wherever it may be, all over the earth. So as you go, what does the Lord require? No longer what do these professors require. What does the Lord require of you but to fear him? as you go. And may God's spirit go before you and bless you and make you a blessing to a world that's in desperate need of the gospel of Christ. God bless. Thank you, Chancellor Hawkins. I'm not as uh, uh, seasoned as you. So it's been only 44 years since I walked across the stage. And I want to tell you something. I'm so grateful that God still has his hand on this place. <clears throat> on behalf of the entire Board of Trustees, let me just say to the graduates, congratulations. We are so very proud of your accomplishment. Uh, and it's, you're the reason that we are here, and we look forward to what God is going to do in and through you in the days ahead. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then, and only then, will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners will be converted unto you. And Lord, as we have just been challenged by your messenger's message today, to fear the Lord, may our hearts be pure, may our hearts be clean, that we may be the vessel that you have called us to be. And Lord, may each and every one of us already have the answer to the question, that answer being yes. And Lord, we wait, we wait just to hear what question you will have for us. And Lord, we want you to know, even before we know what that question is, that the answer is yes. Yes, Lord. Be with each person that's here. We pray blessing on the ministries that are going to be going forth from this place. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Chairman Roberts, for leading us in this special time of prayer. And thank you, Chancellor Hawkins, for a marvelous commencement address so appropriate for uh, this day. I know that we all, not only graduates, but everyone here, uh, received your word for us on this day with thanksgiving. It is now time to recognize the class of 2023. Southwestern Seminary includes the School of Theology, the Terry School of Educational Ministries, the School of Church Music and Worship, the Fish School of Evangelism and Missions, Texas Baptist College, various centers and programs, all who join together to provide a symphony phonic approach to theological education on this campus, preparing these graduates who are seated in front of me for Christian ministry. This is what Southwestern Seminary has been doing so faithfully since 1908, preparing men and women to extend the gospel to the nations. The degrees conferred and the diplomas presented represent years years of hard work and serious study. We congratulate each one of these graduates and we thank all who are here today who have invested in their time. This morning I would like to invite interim provost Matt Queen who will introduce the deans who will present these graduates who have been affirmed by the faculty and approved by the Board of Trustees. Dr. Queen will lead this special time of conferring of degrees and presentation of diplomas. Mr. President, 
Please allow me to present the deans of the seminary who will assist me in presenting the class by degree level for graduation. Dr. Terry Stovall, Dean of Women. Dr. Todd Bates, Dean of Texas Baptist College. Dr. John Massey, Dean of the Fish School of Evangelism and Missions. Dr. Joe Kreider, Dean of the School of Church Music and Worship. Dr. Chris Shirley, Dean of the Terry School of Educational Ministries. Dr. Madison Grace, Interim Dean of the School of Theology. This commencement is a service of Christian worship. So we may, may we please ask that the congregation withhold applause or gestures of congratulations until all the uh, graduates for each degree program have received their degree. Mr. President, the faculty is pleased to present 346 candidates for graduation who have completed the prescribed courses of study lending to their respective certificates and degrees. And now, will all the candidates for the certificates, Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Music, Master of Theological Studies, Mas uh, Master of Music, Master of Divinity, Master of Theology, Doctor of Educational Ministry, Doctor of Ministry, Doctor of Education, and Doctor of Philosophy, please rise. Upon the completion of your prescribed courses of study, having been nominated by the faculty for graduation, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, I do hereby confer upon each one of you the respective certificates and degrees with all the rights, honors, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto, wherever you may serve. Certificate in Hispanic Church Planting, Noe Terrazas. Jorge Adrian Aguilar Vasquez. Jose Antonio Real Santana. Herbin Rolando Romero. Edgar Alejandro Suñega. Certificate in Biblical Counseling. <clears throat> Laura Bastidas. Carla Chapman. Brandon James Chinoweth. Ava Hudnall. Barbara Victoria Luero. <clears throat> Sun Sang Peng. April Span. Bachelor of Arts in Christian Studies, Tommy Bowton. Noelle Grace Coop.
Hannah Michelle Lefevre. <laughs> Serena Lee. Bruce Sloan Michael. Well done. Brianna Maureen Sims. Parker Olan Smith. <laughs> Allison Yared. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts in Humanities. Sung Hae Cho. <laughs> Matthew Aaron Colton. <laughs> Not Arnold. <laughs> Young Do Kim. Allison Marie Kaiser. Sohee Yoon. <laughs> Bachelor of Music Performance. Conley Claire Lincecum. Nathan John Webster. Bachelor of Music and Worship Studies, Matthew T. Hurst. Master of Theological Studies, Fish School of Evangelism and Missions, Shu Jin Jia. <laughs> Chiu Lan. Jean Jose Alfredo Alvarez Diaz Jose Arzate Torres Carlos Canas Romeo Chanjavak Ali Magdiel Samuel Colunga Urbina <laughs> Esther Viviana Constante Sarmiento Vivian Gilberto Corradera Jimenez. <laughs> Jose Juan de los Santos Cavazos. Jorge Herrera. Jorge Ricardo Javier Pinheiro. Nicolas Marimon. Victor Martinez Insignia.
Nestor Minhibar. Luis Guillermo Morales Vasquez. Juan Munoz. Gonzalo Perez Cordova. Roxana Ramirez. Agustin Rosario Vasquez. Ladies Ana Sandoval Escobar. Orlando Sandoval Sanchez. Cheyenne Solis. David Trejas. Kayla Credit. Rustin Pennington. Elizabeth Ann Peterson. James Taylor Tuggle. Master of Divinity, Soma Bungboy. Megan Early. <laughs> Haywan Kim. <laughs> Laura Pepper. Master of Arts in Worship Leadership, Mark Mattingly. Congratulations. Master of Music in Worship Leadership, Jordan Blake Locke. Caleb Michael Norman. Michael Palomo. Caleb Andrew Yule. Garrett Ulrich. Master of Divinity, School of Church Music and Worship, James Luke Waters. <laughs> Master of Arts in Biblical Counseling, Miranda Victorious Brown. James Dew. <laughs> Liu Xiao. <laughs> Jimmy Smith. <laughs> Master of Arts in Christian Education. Christina Alexander.
Bethlehem Gabre Darge. Annie Catherine Jones. Minlin Liao. Emily Kristen Nelson. Bongjin Park. Christina Smith. Blake Ryan Stewart. Heather Squires Walden. Toby Dawn White. Mia Yu. Master of Divinity School of Educational Ministries, Aldo Claria Calvacante. Lauren Elizabeth Sheffield. Grant Daniel Stuckey. Master of Theology, School of Educational Ministries, Valmir Martins Pereira. Formato Rodriguez. Master of Theological Studies, School of Theology, Heather Christopher Austin. Jamie Nicole Ball. Eric Joseph Beyer. Daniel Addison Beal. Drake Christopher Bendabout. Michelle Rodella Brown. Benjamin Munnerlyn Carter, Jr. Isaac Kwak Kwa Chow. Patrick Irvin. Jason Avery Flores. <laughs> Timothy Fortune. <laughs> Heidi Franklin. <laughs> Anderson Goodman. Christopher Scott Gorbett. <laughs> Tara Shea Green. Chad Aaron Humphrey. <laughs> Ki Hoon Kim.
Lanhi Choi Kim. Blake Anthony Long. Philip S. Nicholas. Joseph Nichols. Preston Andrew Pavia. Mark Tyler Pickle. Robert Lee Thomas, Jr. Cole Marshall Travis. Stacy K. Vance. Mean Mark Vo. Brittany Michelle Williams. <laughs> Un Jing Yu. <laughs> Master of Arts, Philosophy, Brandon S. Elder. Master of Divinity, School of Theology, Franco Albano. Marcus James Chapman, Jr. David Allen Downey. James Timothy Duggar. <laughs> Timothy Jordan Franklin. <laughs> Harrison Stephen Free. <laughs> Dana Brock G. Justin Graham. Stephen Daniel Henry. Tay Young Hug. May Nintate Moon. Jaysak Her. Jonathan Johnston. Drexel King. Hyun Sung Lee. Zhu Young Lee. <laughs> William Shane Lee. <laughs> Glenn Robert Melvin. <laughs> Jacob Edward Morrison.
Christopher Sage Nation. Heshin O. Oh. Blake Smith. Kelsey Hope Stuckey. Dominique Jamal Thomas. Chow Wakasaki Suma. Bose Varghese. Roland Villarreal. Jeremy Morgan White. Ho Shi Wong. Master of Theology, School of Theology. Cham Han Wong. Kyung Ui Jong. Charles Benjamin Pierce Workman. We now come to the conferring of professional doctoral degrees. Assisting in the hooding of professional doctoral degrees would be Dr. Justin Wainscott, Director of the Professional Doctoral Studies, and the supervisors for each candidate. The project of each title for each candidate will be read as they are hooded. Doctor of Ministry, Fish School of Evangelism and Missions, Kevin Lee Alvarez. <laughs> Developing a plan for more effective discipleship at Long Point Baptist Church in Houston, Texas. Aaron William Summers. A strategy to develop change readiness for succession plans in a post-baby boomer era at First Baptist Church in Crowley, Texas. Doctor of Educational Ministry, School of Church Music and Worship. Jonathan Cormack. <clears throat> Equipping instrumental musicians for faithful service in worship at Severe Heights Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. Doctor of Educational Ministry, School of Educational Ministries, Braden Levi Buss.
preparing pastors for the work of ministry through First Baptist Church, Okmulgee, Oklahoma. Jonathan P. Kofer. Equipping Christian parents of teenagers at Antioch Baptist Church in Conway, Arkansas to disciple in the home. Pierce Franklin Eden. Equipping discipleship group members for group leadership at First Baptist Church of Helotus, Texas. Chad Anthony Edgington. Introducing concepts of biblical counseling to the First Baptist Church of Olney, Texas. Jacqueline Hyder. Equipping ministry leaders with a proactive approach to resilience in ministry. Christina Noel Sandra. Equipping the staff of Christ Chapel Baptist Church, Bible Church in Fort Worth, Texas to understand biblical complementarianism. Eileen <laughs> Sun Teng. Multidimensional family discipleship, parenting support group in a Chinese American intergenerational church. <laughs> Doctor of Ministry, School of Educational Ministries, George Henry Dyson IV. <whistles> A comparative analysis between biblical counseling and humanistic counseling models. Christopher Harper. <laughs> Equipping fathers at Grace Preparatory Academy in Arlington, Texas to disciple their children for the glory of God and the good of his church. Doctor of Ministry, School of Theology, Byung Choi. A praying Mok Jong and praying saints, developing a teaching manual for cell group leaders focusing on prayer. Hyun Seok Choi. Is Baptist polity democratic or congregational? A study of the importance and meaning of congregationalism as the identity of Baptists. Gilbert Kilho Han.
Proposals based on a biblical evaluation of egalitarian theology's understanding of headship in the family and the church. J. Sung Han. <laughs> Suggesting the importance of cooperative ministry between local churches and campus ministry organization for the revival of the Korean church, focusing on Jungju Lord's Church. Young Oak Ha. <laughs> Developing a Tong sermon series and teaching manual to help church members increase their maturity in the faith and resist heresy. Hyun <laughs> Jin Kim. Developing a life application coaching manual from the four Gospels. <laughs> Sung Wook Kim. <laughs> My beloved. Developing an educational manual of a biblical sexual ethic for the Christians in the postmodern age. <laughs> Sansik Min. A happy pastor for a small town immigrant church a pastoral suggestion to build a small but healthy immigrant church with a pastor's unwavering identity and God's calling. <laughs> Young Huang Park. <laughs> Text-driven sermons according to life cycle, focusing on the case King Beat Church. <laughs> Sung Min Park. <laughs> A study on the Anti Discrimination Act and homosexuality in South Korea, focusing on rights oriented sexual minority. K. Yong Tan. <laughs> Changing attitudes toward disciple making at Chinese Baptist Church of Coral Springs, Florida through text driven sermons. We now come to the conferring of research doctoral degrees. And assisting in the hooding of research doctoral degrees will be Dr. Kelly King, Interim Research Doctoral Studies Supervisor. And the supervisors for each candidate will be uh, joining her as well. The dissertation title of each candidate will be read as the student is hooded. Doctor of Education.
Cherry School of Educational Ministries. Mary Elizabeth Collier. Where are they learning? Infant toddler learning environments in the church. Lance Randall Kroll. Formative and attendant attributes of replicating disciple makers, a multi case study. <laughs> Daphne Mays Harris. An examination of failed female mentoring relationships within Southern Baptist churches in the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. <laughs> Ashley Mills Hill. The Woman's Place in the Christian Academy, an exploration of how females attain senior leadership positions at Baptist institutions. Doctor of Philosophy, Fish School of Evangelism and Missions, Franklin Anak Karam. A Quest of Indigeneity, an evaluation of the Baptist missionary movement among the Iban in Sarawak, 1988 to 2018. Doctor of Philosophy, School of Church Music and Worship, Holly Mullerin Farrow. Theology inspires doxology, the hymnody of Anne Dunton and Anne Steele. Doctor of Philosophy, Terry School of Educational Ministries, Roy Michael Kelly II. Support for youth ministry in the Southern Baptist Convention from 1949 to 1999 as contrasted with mainline Protestant denominations. Soon Guan Li. An examination of the historical and cultural impediments to family ministry in the South Korean Evangelical Church. Doctor of Philosophy, School of Theology. Gaidi K. Burgess. <laughs> Preaching during the 19th century American slavery crisis, a critical analysis of John Albert Broadus and Henry Ward Beecher. James Prather Crockett, Jr. Christ over all things. Cosmic Christ in Colossians and Ephesians in the context of ancient Judaism. Ooh. 
William Warren Henry, Jr. Atonement and the logic of resurrection in Hebrews 9, 27 through 28. Jesus' ministry to lead believers for salvation into heaven a very little while after individual death and judgment. Martin R. Jones. A post-pandemic theological ethic for business. Bridging the divide between deontology and virtue in an emerging marketplace. Gu Quan. An analysis of Yang Cho's narrative sermons through the lens of text-driven preaching. Jordan Lang Stevens. The pragmatic function of word order variation in the book of Amos. Congratulations to the class of 2023. We are so happy for each one of you. I know that everyone here wants to join me one more time in offering their congratulations to this class. urge you as you leave this place to serve well and to serve faithfully, to use this, these years of preparation in order that you might present the gospel over and over, year after year, and that you might finish well, that you would represent the commitments of this great commandment and great commission institution, carrying forth the Southwestern heart and soul, the core values of this place as you serve in Texas, across the country, and around the world. We are so happy for each one of you. We've already recognized the family members who have invested so much in you uh, in order to be here and celebrate this day. But we want to say a special word for those who have guided you in the classroom, who have helped you learn to think, to think Christianly, to think theologically, to think in terms of how to serve one another, how to serve this world in a way that is faithful to Holy Scripture and honoring to our Lord. That is one of the finest teaching faculties on the face of the earth. Join me, please, in thanking the faculty of Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. In just a few minutes, we're all going to stand together to sing the seminary hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal. But before doing so, we want to be sure that each person in this room has an opportunity to recognize Jesus Christ as your king, the eternal king, the one who came to this earth to live a perfect life, who died a redeeming death in our place, 
who was raised on the third day and then was exalted to the right hand of God the Father. He reigned as king for all eternity. If you've never placed your faith in King Jesus, in the resurrected and exalted Christ, we urge you today to receive his free offer of grace, to thank him for what he has done for you, to trust him and to recognize Jesus Christ as your Lord, Savior, and King. Any of these graduates, any of the faculty, any of us wearing these medieval uniforms on this day would be delighted to have a further conversation with you if you've never come to the place of acknowledging Jesus Christ as King of your life. It would be our privilege to help you think about this ultimate life decision. But now let us all recognize the one true King and stand together as Dr. Joe Kreider comes to lead us in the singing of the seminary hymn, Lead On, O King Eternal. Thank you for your singing. Would you please remain standing for the prayer of commissioning? And then after the prayer of commissioning, would you please remain in your places until the, the recessional has taken place? Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, God of our salvation and God who has created us and who has formed us, we thank you for a wonderful and glorious day. We thank you for the culmination of years of labor and preparation of these men and women. And Lord, we thank you for the sacrifices of their families, their spouses, their children, and friends. And Father, we thank you for allowing us to serve them while here at Southwestern and TBC. Now we pray that you will take them to the earth's four corners with the good news of Jesus Christ. May it remain true that because of their work, that you have started and will sustain in them 
that the sun will never set on Southwestern. May all this be for your glory and for your honor. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God and our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and evermore. Let everybody say amen.